Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for tuning in to Ummah Khair. Inshallah, one of the things I'm planning to do with this channel is to create a series of videos dedicated to the latest trends and research on diet and nutrition. I want to preface this series with a brief video discussing the main concept that underlies every successful diet. And this is the concept that weight management is determined by the relationship between calorie expenditure and calorie consumption. Let's break this down a little bit further to understand it better. Calorie consumption is simply what we put in our bodies, our food and our drink. Calorie expenditure are those calories that are expended through our body's basal metabolic rate, also known simply as our metabolism. We also expend calories through activities of daily living and through exercise. There's also the thermal effect of food. This is the amount of energy it takes for us to digest any sort of food that we eat. The relationship between how many calories we ingest versus how much we expend is what gives us the caloric surplus or caloric deficit. A caloric deficit is when the calories that we ingest is not enough to maintain our current body weight. In this case, our body would actually metabolize other tissue in order to meet its calorie requirements, hopefully fat and not muscle. This will inevitably cause us to lose weight. A caloric surplus is when the calories that we ingest actually exceed what our body requires to maintain its current body weight. The extra calories will be used to create new muscle tissue or stored as fat. And again, this will cause us to gain weight. As simple as it sounds, this is the backbone of every successful diet. Whether it be paleo, if it fix your macros, vegan, keto, anything you can think of, they all employ this principle in order for you to lose weight. I have many family and friends that have stuck to one of these diets and seen great results. They swear by their diets and they feel like the diet that they're on is the only way to lose weight. But when we dig a little bit deeper, the conclusion is always the same. They were eating less than they were before. So does that mean that all these diets are just fads and they don't really work? Well, no, they're clearly working for the people that are doing them. But the effectiveness of any diet always boils down to how easily it can help you maintain a caloric deficit. If you love the keto lifestyle, then stick to that. If you love veganism, then more power to you. If intermittent fasting actually fits your schedule better, then go ahead and do that. As long as you had a caloric deficit, you're gonna lose weight. An important point to understand is although that the relationship between calories in and calories out is true, is a very simplistic way of looking at dieting in general. This concept doesn't really factor in the nutritional value of the foods that you're eating. So let's say you wanted to do an ice cream diet. As long as you stayed at a caloric deficit, you would lose weight, but you would have a case of severe malnutrition and you would have to suffer the consequences of an overindulgence in processed sugars and saturated fat. Furthermore, the principle actually assumes that the main function of a diet is to lose weight. No doubt, most people will see a significant increase in their quality of life and their health through a reduction in body weight, specifically fat mass. But the issue is that long-term weight loss is actually very difficult to maintain. A new trend in health sciences is actually pushing towards a more weight-neutral approach to dieting. This seeks to combat the narrative that weight loss is synonymous with health, citing research that demonstrates that even without a change in body weight, many individuals can see significant health benefits from diet and exercise. As Muslims, obviously we have to make sure our food is halal but also we have to make sure that we aren't overeating. This is because of the injunction of the Prophet وسلم, who said, the son of Adam does not fill any vessel worse than his stomach. It is sufficient for the son of Adam to eat a few mouthfuls to keep him going. If he must fill his stomach, let him fill one third with food, one third with drink, and one third with air. In our context, being in a caloric deficit isn't as important as following the wisdoms of the Prophet Some methods of achieving a caloric deficit account for a few very big meals in the day. Even if we were to maintain a caloric deficit using this method, if we were overeating during these meals, it would be inappropriate. At the end of the day, we acknowledge that the bottom line with weight management is calories in versus calories out. But this concept cannot be employed in a vacuum. Here's a nice visual by the powerlifter dietitian on the underlying complexity of the issue. Jazakallahu khair for watching till the end of the video. I know there's still a lot to unpack, but in future videos, I plan on breaking this down a little bit further concept by concept. If anything was unclear, if you have any questions about the video or you just want to add to the discussion, please leave a comment below. Make sure you like and subscribe for more beneficial content and inshallah I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget, lift with purpose.